Welcome to Narrow the James Bill. I hope you're well, thanks for joining me. We can't seem to turn the TV on these days without hearing something about the energy crisis. And um, that's either about the availability of energy or indeed the rising cost of energy. Um, and that's across the board and around the world, it seems. And um, I mean, to be honest, it's something that narrow boaters and people who live off grid have had to deal with for quite some time. Um, or forever really you've always been managing the amount of power you've got whereas if you live at home or in a you know in a house you just take for granted um, like you flick on a, a, a switch and the lights come on government though this year in the UK have announced that um, there may well be power cuts this year um, or this winter on the coldest days which they used to have in the 70s people harp on about it um, it was uh, just before my time but I mean, in fairness, we haven't, had, you know, we don't experience power cuts and power outages in the UK at all. I know some parts of the world do, but we don't. But yeah, living on a narrow boat um, is something that we've always had to uh, always had to consider. Um, and depending on where you are and what kind of boat you've got, you've got different kind of backup options. And this is where it's coming to now is kind of power backups. Um, and um, so if you're in a marina, you've most likely got access to shore power. So you plug in your boat, that charges your batteries and gives you kind of 240 volt around your boat and everything you need. Obviously, the cost of that is now rising. Um, so, you know, that's something that people have to factor in. Uh, but obviously, being in a marina is not exactly cheap either. Um, and then if you are, um, you know, if if, if people run their engines as well as another way of charging your battery so if you're not getting enough solar most people have got solar panels now um and if, if you're not getting enough solar running your batteries is another good way of topping them up um i choose not to do that on my boat because firstly the noise of the engine is horrific um and the whole boat you know you can't get away from it basically but also my boat's air cooled so or my engine's air cooled so i don't get the added benefit of generating hot water like rob does on his boat when he's running his engine to charge his batteries he's also getting hot water at the same time so it's a bit of a double whammy whereas for me i wouldn't be getting that so um i rely purely on solar um and but you know it kind of sees me good but there are times and certainly now uh, where i am here it's a little bit sheltered by trees and there's a well basically trees um and um obviously it's winter so you're not getting as much solar light anyway so um all those things kind of considered i have to really kind of keep an eye on on the power um but I do have backups, as you saw in the last video, I've got the Delta sitting, so that powers the galley, which kind of alleviates a main power drain from the main leisure bank. So my boat, you know, to kind of touch wood fares okay. It did last winter, although there were a few days where it was a bit hit and miss, but um, yeah, having a backup is absolutely critical, really. Um, and Rob, a couple of days ago, had a, had a ma major battery failure. Uh, kind of in, in the middle of the night and his battery alarms went off anyway this is what happened that's going up about five six Okay, so on Rob's boat, Serafina, he has got an almighty complicated system. Basically, he's got 24 volt and 48 volt. Mm. And this is a big bank of 2 volt batteries wired in series. Uh, but essentially, he's getting no power. Okay, so Rob is deciding to take the boat for a long, hard cruise. So we're leaving slow patrol behind. We're turning around and we're going to go and do the Tring Summit even though the weather doesn't look particularly nice today. Okay, so the idea of this cruise is to chuck in as much charge back into the battery bank on Rob's boat as possible. Remember, it's a 48 volt system, so for that to be looking healthy, it needs to be at about 54 volts or not. So we're on our way back now. Let's see what the batteries read. Well, that's not plumped. Oh, hang on, here we go. And that's not even the ring mate on. Okay, put the ring mate on. 
Oh, actually, no, go, because we're just losing voltage here. Really. Yeah, we'll just go through the nick of time for winter and the problems that Rob's been having on in Serafina. Uh, EcoFlow pulled through and sent me the Delta 2, which is their upgrade from obviously the Delta 1, which is what I've got paying my galley at the moment. I can't believe that with the cost of everything going up, this has not only not gone up, this has come down in cost, it's gone down in weight and gone up in power and capacity. I just can't think of anything else. Uh, that is noticeably lighter than the original Delta. I think this is 11 kilos, the original one was 15. So, I mean, they've shaved a massive amount of weight off. The main reason they've done that is because they've got a uh, a, a better battery in there. It's a, it's a Tesla battery, or the battery powers that Tesla uses. Um, so, and yeah, it's lighter. The uh, All the rest of it's pretty much the same. It's got all the same kind of outputs and this, that, and the other. Um, the advantage of this is that it runs on... Um, where you can read into it through Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, which the original Delta you couldn't. But I did say I was speaking to EcoFlow about my needs on the boat, and they said, well, they could do one better. They do do bigger ones. They do like the Delta Max and Delta Pro, which are basically bigger. It's got a bigger floor print than that, which I don't really want. But they have come through and sent me this, which is an additional battery pack, which basically it doubles the capacity of it all, which is great. It means it can run for two weeks instead of one, you know, for my galley or whatever. Um, but it also means that if you are powering really kind of high draining appliances like welding and something like that, um, this will give you a, a, a more than two, more so, more than 3,000 kilowatts of output. So it's kind of pretty beefy. So, um, and it links together with this fat cable, which basically links between this one and that. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to putting that to the test, see if it's big enough to power Rob's boat. It's just pulling 920 watts. Still only really 75% though, so I've still got quite a bit left in it. Yeah. So what's on at the moment? Uh, well, it's just the inverter um, drawing power from the eco flows through the shore power line. Yeah. And it's going through the bulk charge on the inverse charger. Right, so it's on bulk charge. <laughs> Whilst the eco flows are charging Rob's boat, I've picked up the kids and I've brought them to the largest free fireworks display in Hertfordshire. Okay, so check this out. When we talk about power anxiety, uh, the only lights I've got on in the boat are the dinette lights and the undergunnel lights, but they kind of hardly take up anything. Stereo's off, everything else is off. There's nothing being charged or anything like that. Um, and we're, I'm in an area where there's not much by way of solar. And we've had a few days where there's been, well, I haven't seen the sun in days. So as a result of which, this is what happens when I turn on my tap in the kitchen. It can't quite deal with it. I come on again, which basically means I've run out of power in my leisure bank. It's enough to keep the lights on, but if I was to put them all on, it wouldn't work so well. Right, little bit of light left. I've managed to isolate the batteries out there in the battery bank. So this is now all isolated. There's nothing going into that. Um, obviously the solar is still connected and is still putting stuff into the batteries, although no, it's not in this light. Um, I've connected in a cigarette lighter adapter. 
into the negative buzz bar there and then the positive feed there. Plug it into the back of the EcoFlow. Right, moment of truth time. The light should go in the boat. The light should go on in the boat. And I think I already had the stereo on. But in terms of initial stuff, there's not much on. Stereo and lights. That's it. What's that? That's water. But oh, okay, I'll turn the water off. Right, here we go. Turn it on at the back. Let's see. Yes, it's worked. Stereo's on. Right. And what's it drawing? 29. Okay, that's hardly anything. That's basically half the value of the fridge. This is quite good now. I'm kind of starting to see what everything, what the current of everything is. The fridge at its full whack is 45. EcoFlow have also made really good improvements to their app. This is uh, showing the charging uh, of the EcoFlow Delta. Uh, you can change the speed of the charging, which is useful depending where you are. I'm currently in an area where there's no one around, so it's quite all right. But if you wanted, you didn't want the fans to run, you could reduce the speed, which is quite useful. One major advantage in the way I've got it set up is that you can access the app um, through Wi-Fi. Um, the Delta 2 connects through Wi-Fi. So you see these settings, these little toggles where you can turn the various AC and DC off. You can do that remotely as well. well I've got both batteries connected through this very uh, non-malleable cable it's come with. But um, it's basically taking about 60 watts out of the top extra battery, putting it into the uh, Delta 2, and then about 50 watts is coming out of the Delta 2 into the boat, and that's powering pretty much everything's on at the moment, all the lights um, and stereo. Yeah, the only thing that's not on is the water pump. And currently, that will run for about two and a half days, just like that. So um, that's with the that one on 100% and that one was on 20%. So combined, it gives me uh, yeah, 57 hours of running time with all the lights on and everything. Check this out, late at night, every single light on in the boat, uh, stereos on, and uh, this is all being done by the Delta 2. I'm about to put the tap on again and see what happens. Just a little flicker as it kicks in, but that's good. That's very good. Happy days, problem solved. Okay, look, it's not the perfect solution uh, by a long stretch. Uh, yes, it gives me all the power I need. The problem is I can't really use that power. Um, I'm using the 12 volt cigarette lighter adapter at the end, and that's got a limit of 127 watts. So if I was to put everything on in the boat, at the moment I've got the lights on, the stereo, it's about 50 watts. Uh, with the water pump, it's about 100. So if I was to put the well gulp on as well, it's gonna take it above that and it's gonna blow it. So um, I can't really use it as a way of replacing um, the leisure bank of batteries at all. Um, I can use it as a backup. It worked really well as a backup. Problem is wiring it in isn't particularly easy for that. So we're, whereas the fridge setup is much easier, whereas this one's not. Um, I've disconnected the bank of batteries from the boat because I didn't know what would happen if I was to have that connected to essentially the same terminals as the deltas connected. Um, obviously with that tolerance of only eight amps and 127 watts going through the 12 volt um, cigarette light adapter, I didn't know what would happen. I thought something would blow, so I thought, right, I'll leave that one alone. Um, so it's not particularly easy to kind of put in, take out and stuff. And obviously once I disconnect it, all the lights go off on the boat and it's just completely dead. So it's, yeah, it's not the best system yet. So I'm basically looking for a way of harnessing the power through AC. And this is where you guys might come in to help because uh, I don't really know what the best way of doing it is. Um, I think I've had a brief look at uh, Victron AC DC converters and AC chargers and stuff. So, but basically, what I need is something that I can 
which comes out with a three pin plug that I can chuck into the back of the Delta um, and with the uh, and then plug and then you know for, for the charge to go into the batteries on the boat and then for me to also run the boat with it so um, I don't have to connect it kind of in an ugly way on the actual things it just plugs in nice and easily and uh, and that's that's the plan so anyone's got any bright ideas for that I'll be uh, I'm all ears but because it worked really well on Rob's he just plugged it into his shoreline and away we go okay for his boat he had to kind of limit the amount of amps being drawn from it and stuff but I said this can chuck out three kilowatts of power certainly with the two units combined so there's plenty of power there um, and um, so yeah I just got to find for me a better solution of using it on board but in terms of the actual bits of kit yeah I can't fault it I think they're brilliant I'll leave a description to uh, uh, in the description I'll leave a link to where you can buy these um, so and a little heads up I think there might be a um, uh, what's it called Black Friday sale anyway, I think they might be one of those towards the end of November but if you want to get one early they've sold out in the UK so you might need to kind of get in there early um, but um, yeah so I'm still speaking to EcoFlow about other solutions and other ways we can do things uh, they've sent me a bunch of solar panels as well some of their new stuff which is you know looks really good um, the other thing I can do is obviously harness my existing solar panels but these have got a limit of 500 uh, and mine combined is about 900 so or 800 or whatever it is so again it's not quite it doesn't quite work out yet but I'm sure we'll get there until next time, hope you guys are well. Bye-bye.